Okay, we are underway. We are recording, Sarah. Sarah, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for taking your time to give us a little intro to acrylics today. And I will turn it over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thank you, Ed Flash, who is um, the head of the Newcastle Arts Council, which I joined this year. I'm a Newcastle resident myself. I'm currently in Palm Springs, California. Uh, but I'm very excited to be here with all of you. So happy. Um, if you want in the chat, just to say, have you, have you guys ever painted with acrylics before? Today we're going to be painting, I'm going to be painting with acrylics on canvas. I like this. And eventually we're all going to paint something that looks similar to this with your own artistic twist. Very excited. Um, there was already a question. If you don't have canvas or acrylics and you want to use whatever you have on hand, uh, colored pencils, watercolor, um, markers, paper, anything you have, um, this is all possible. You're just going to follow my instructions. And if you have any questions on how to tweak it for what you're doing, just let me know. Okay. So uh, like Vicki said, I'm going to start giving some instructions. And if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. And then we'll open up um, off mute in case you guys want to discuss anything or anything like that. So with that, let's get started. Um, I'm going to introduce you to some of the things that I have on my table to make us successful today and um, give you a minute or so to make sure you have those things too. Okay, so for starters, I have my canvas, the blank one that I'm going to use. Um, I have my paint brushes that I'm going to use today. I have um a larger paintbrush to get more surface area. And I have some smaller paintbrushes that have are gonna have more precise lines. And then I have a pencil um, with an eraser to do some guidelines. That's what our first step. If you don't have that, you can use um, paint or just eyeball it, that's fine too. But I like to have the pencil um, just so that I'm giving my painting direction. I have, let's see here if I can some water, I'm just gonna move this down, water, all the different colored paints I've got. The main colors you'll need are red, yellow, blue. These are our primary colors and we can basically create any colors um, from these colors. But if you also have in your paint pack, you can use the pre-made ones. So yellow and blue together make green, but you can use the green that comes in. Um, yellow and red together, make orange. I don't actually have the orange, but you can make that together um, by mixing. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Got some pink, um, turquoise. Again, these colors can be made if you don't have them, but it um, does make it a little easier. And then white. And I didn't feel the need for black because this one, this painting's fun. But if you have black and you wanna use it to deepen or darken some of your colors, that's totally an option. I also have some paper towel to clean my brushes with, and those are my tools. Back here is the painting that we're painting. Um, I'm leaving this on the screen so that you can see it in case you feel like you want to go ahead or maybe you're a little behind and you kind of want to see where we're at. You have this to reference. Um, there's also, I printed for myself, just a piece of paper copy of this, but um, yeah, with that, we'll get started. Any questions before we get started? Um, if you have a question, put it in the chat or raise your hand on Zoom. I'm sure you all know how to do that from all the schools and meetings that you guys have. No questions so far? All right, let's get going then. Okay, is this step-by-step? -step? Yes, I'm gonna teach you step-by-step -step so that your painting can look like mine if you want it to, or um, the fun part about all this is you can make this look like your own too. You don't have to use the colors that I'm using and you can do it your own, but I am going to teach it to you in the way that I'm to make it kind of look like this. And you can use what's called artistic license to put your own spin on it and, and have fun with it. Okay. So with that, I think we're going to start um, getting going here. Is everybody in the room? Everyone's ready to go. So I've got my, one more question, can we use acrylics? Yes, I'm using acrylic paint. I'm using acrylic paint from Michaels, but you can use anything you want. Um, tube paint works too. Okay, so our first step is actually just with our pencil in our canvas or whatever surface that we're using. 
I'm using a canvas, mine is a nine by 12, um, but you may have a smaller canvas or a bigger canvas. Um, if you have any questions on how to scale what you're doing to your canvas, let us know. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, um, my canvas is kind of tall. I, I think the pineapple is tall too. So in school, you might learn like hot dog or hamburger way. I think we're gonna do hamburger way, the vertical, okay? So we're gonna keep our canvas tall. And um, if your canvas is not a square and it is taller, then you're gonna follow my instructions. So with the pineapple, we kind of have where the fruit is, like the big chunk where you get to eat out of it. And then we have the really fun leaves. Um, and that's how the pineapple grows. So we want to keep the fruit nice and big, but we also want to keep room for leaves. So that's why we use pencil um, to kind of just give us a little head start to show us where we want to go with our painting. And don't worry, um, I'm going to draw my pencil really dark so you can see it. You might want to do it just a little lighter because mostly we're going to be painting on top of our pencil. So um, what I'm going to do in my canvas, I've got some nice big hands adult hands, but you're gonna, you can take your hand or a little bigger than your hand and kind of make it nice and big. Like you're gonna give someone a nice high five and you're gonna high five your canvas so that where your palm is at the bottom. And that's like about, for me on this canvas, about two thirds of the canvas, okay? And we're gonna put a little pencil mark right at the top of our fingers. Doesn't matter if it's so perfect. And then we have the bottom. So what we're gonna do is the, that top mark right here is gonna start our um, pineapple figure and then our bottom mark will be down here. So I'm actually gonna start with the bottom and I'm gonna just draw a nice wide smile line at the bottom. So I'm gonna draw that first and then show you what that looks like. So a nice wide smile. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're painting over it. Can you see that? That's at the bottom of my canvas. And that wide smile is gonna be the widest part because our pineapple, if you can see here, it's gotta have a base. Like imagine you're gonna stand it on the countertop. So we're gonna give that a base, it can be wide. And then we're gonna create like an egg shape where the top of our egg shape is gonna be that little mark in the top part of our canvas. It's maybe hard to see here, it'll be easier to see. And it's gonna kind of taper up so that the top part is a little smaller. We're gonna have a smile there that's smaller, just to show you, I'll draw it. So there we go, smaller versus bigger. And then we're gonna connect both lines, um, keeping it round. And it's okay if your shape's not perfect because this is just the pencil part. You see that? I know it's a little hard to see at the glare, but. It kind of looks like a gumdrop or an egg or whatever you want it to look like, okay? The rest we're gonna just leave for now, the space up top, because those are gonna be our fun leaves. And we're just gonna focus on the pineapple, okay? For right now. Once we have our shape, our basic shape, the next thing we're gonna do with our pencil before we kind of are done with our pencil is start to create like a grid lines. They're gonna make up the individual chunks of the pineapple. And that'll be easier to see once I draw it. But we're going to go on the diagonal. And our grid lines are also going to take on a curved shape. Um, or they could just be square, but I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to just draw here on the diagonal. Like one, two, three, maybe four lines so that they like almost like you're creating a candy cane. And then we're gonna do that in the opposite direction to create our cross marks, okay? So let's do Okay, can you see? We've got our grid there. Three lines is fine. You can make them smaller or larger. However, if you have smaller squares that you create because you have less uh, big, smaller lines, then you'll have more squares to paint. Every square, we're going to kind of treat as its own square. So we're painting each one of these separately, and it's all going to come together. 
So you can have smaller squares or larger squares. That's up to you. And with that, we're kind of done with our pencil for right now. We're going to be ready to get painting. Okay. Four. Amazing, Shana. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, if you haven't already, we're going to get our paints ready. So like I said earlier, this is I'm using palette paper, which is paper that you can use to mix on. You might have a plastic plate or a paper plate. Oh, Carrie has an actual palette. That's wonderful. Um, she bought a plate. Is that a plate? Here, another Carrie has a palette. Oh, so is it Nora? You, you got a, a palette that's used. You paint. So what I'm going to do to lay this out is going to be hard to show you, but I'm going to put my primary colors, which again are yellow, okay, red, and blue, in three separate corners of my sheet. Okay, and that's gonna be hard for me to show you, but I will. So I'm gonna do red over here, yellow over here, and blue over here. And why I do that um, is so that I can use the in-between space to mix my, my other colors that I'm gonna create. So let's get our paint nice and ready on here. I'll try and do a little demo. Actually, let's put the camera down for this part. So right here in the corner, can you see? Yep. And yellow here. And blue over here. Oops. Uh oh, I don't my headphones. Okay. So now we're going to be able to make any of the colors that we need from that. And if we you have a question, can we? Oh, she's on mute. If someone wants to unmute, what colors? We already have pre made colors. Still red and yellow and blue, but you can also put your orange and your green and white on the palette too. Um, let's see, can you hear me okay? Yes, okay, but I just took my headphones off because they were getting in my paint. Okay, so any other questions while we get our colors ready? You might also want to put some white on your palette because what you do with white, we're not really going to need white itself. What about orange, green, and purple? Great question. So if you have orange, red, and yellow make orange, so you want to put your orange so that it's in between those colors you might want to do some mixing of the different shades and yellow and blue make green so you put the green in the middle there and red and blue make purple so you can kind of fill that in yeah you can use the pre-made ones that's fine white can go in the center because you're going to use your white um just to get the colors in the perfect way that you like them so i think we're ready to start painting we're going to take our i'm going to take a medium-sized paintbrush like this to compare, this is my big one. I just want medium. And um, we're gonna start, we're gonna usually, this is, we like to go from light to dark because the it's easier to add darker colors. But for this, um, I'm gonna show you a cool trick. We're gonna actually start from dark, dark down in the bottom. It's gonna be hard to see until I put paint on, to light. So I'm gonna dip my paintbrush into the red. And um, water is our friend here. We're gonna just use water and paint. And I'm gonna start to color. This is in the bottom right of my pineapple, right in the lines. And I'm gonna follow the lines that I created with my pencil and start to paint the square, okay? We're gonna do one square at a time. This one can be completely red, okay? And I watered mine down, so it's going to be a little thin, but that's my preference. If you like nice and thick colors, that's okay too. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to paint um, pretty much the whole bottom in this red color, okay, which I'll show you in a second. But we're going to leave white spaces in between. So where our pencil line is, you can leave that white or like just around it. And I'll show you that in just a second. So. And I'm just going to follow the guidelines that I created for myself. And if you don't like your guidelines in pencil, you can just fix them using paint. So if you see here, I left some white in between my two squares. And I'm just filling out my bottom squares 
with the red. Following the lines I created, see, to get the bottom of the pineapple. Leaving some white space between, you know, in the white space, you don't have to leave white space. You can fill that in with other colors, but for right now, let's leave it so that you can make that decision later. Okay. And I'm just filling in this bottom part with the straight red is fine because we're going to actually mix our colors on the canvas. It's going to be really fun. And I'm going to just do half of the square because it ends up getting lighter. And a part of the middle one, too. This nice big middle one. Just following the lines I created. Okay. We've got our bottom and we're filling it out with our squares and these are all the different like when you see an actual pineapple it's got those ridges um, and kind of little spikies we'll worry about the spikies at the end we're just gonna get the um, bottom there and this also goes on the right side we're gonna also do these in red too so just like this last one too we'll do part of this one So right now we just use red and the fun part comes in. So this next square is here is also red, but we're gonna um, either water those down so it's like a lighter red and or you can add white. So it's kind of like more pinky. And so um, I'm getting a watered down red in, in this space, just gonna do lighter here. So it gets lighter. See how it's darker here? And then this is lighter because I'm using water and red, or if you want white, red. What happens if you have a different bottom shape? Well, everyone's bottom shape is going to look different, and that's perfectly fine. Um, if you don't like the way that it's shaping up, you can always add more sections to get it to look like the way you want it to. Uh -oh. Some dogs barking. Sorry about that. Okay, so just doing this bottom section here, following my lines. Okay. Okay. And then this is where it's going to start to turn orange on this on the left side. You're looking at your canvas and usually what you now you have a choice here for me i'm going to use my dirty paintbrush and i'm going to dip it into my yellow and then on my cam or my palette i'm just going to kind of clean the red into the, the yellow so that i start to create orange so i'll show you what that looks like give me just a second here's our painting and let me just show you the palette can you see See, between the red and the yellow, I started making orange, okay? So we're gonna, like I said, we didn't have to clean our brush. Usually we would if we want. If you're very specific and you wanna have very clean lines and colors, that's your choice. You can just do your own orange, but we're gonna just create this new orange. And then we're gonna start right from the red we want it to be mostly red orange right now. So more red than we do yellow. We're gonna start um, on the left side, right here, painting um, our red orange squares. Again, following those same lines. And we can even start to add that orange color to mix it with some of our already red squares. So I'm going back into the right side, right over here. And I'm layering my orange with my red. 
and I'm blending right on the canvas. I'm just mixing my orange and my red. See that square that I did? Can you see it? How it's orange and red? And I'm gonna take my orange and red and start to do some here. And then I'm gonna take my orangey red and add a little more yellow to make it a little more brighter orange. And I'm even gonna um, paint some here. Keep going up, up on your pineapple. I'm doing this mostly on the bottom left if you're facing your canvas. And see, with some of these squares, I only fill them out halfway like this one because I'm actually gonna use other colors to blend in to kind of create some fun. So I'm gonna keep going here, just filling out my little squares with orange. And we're gonna bring the orange up on the left side, pretty much to the top. We're gonna to follow the line with our orange. See how I'm on the left side going up with orange, just here and here. And then I'm just, see how I did half of the square up there? Because I'm gonna add some other lighter colors there too. So I'm just kind of creating an outline on the left side and using that same orange a little bit right here on the right side, like in the top corner. Yeah. So now that color that I created that I added there was mostly red and then added more yellow. I'm gonna just keep adding some more yellow to it so it becomes a brighter, more yellowy orange. So we're just gonna mix a little more yellow into our orange. And if you're, if you're using pre-made paint, um, you can just add yellow to your pre-made colors too. So now I have this lighter yellow orange and I'm just gonna kind of layer it on top and blend in some of these spots so that it, the, and if it's not yellow enough, I can just keep adding more yellow. So I just mix the dark orange with the light orange and I'm blending. It wasn't yellow enough for me. So I added more yellow and then I painted this square. See the different dimension I have there? And I'm just gonna kind of follow that. I'm gonna paint some yellowy orange over here. Fill out that square. And fill some out here to mix it so it's brighter here. Then I'm gonna do just yellow with a hint of orange and paint this square here. And I'm just having fun with it, leaving the white space in between my squares. So this is mostly yellow. But you can really do whatever you want. If we want to take a break, because um, from my instruction, and just if you, anyone has any questions on what they're doing, or if you want me to look at yours and just take a peek, I'd be happy to help you if you don't like the way something looks, or if you just want to show and tell, I'd love that. So you want to be unmuted. Um, you can either raise your hand, or we can maybe just unmute everybody. I just gave folks the option to unmute themselves if they want. Steve, um, that's beautiful. Steve Reaps. I am loving that. Oh, I'm what's your name, Katie? I'm Nora. I'm just using my dad's iPad. You're using your dad's. That is so stunning. Look how you've used your own colors and done your own thing, and it still looks amazing. Nora, yeah. that's beautiful, too. I love that. Look at those colors. Anyone else want to show me theirs? If I can't see you on the screen. San Hughes, is that your name? Oh my gosh, stunning. Beautiful. Shana, love it. Oh, you're doing your own thing over there, but I like that too. You went ahead, still really fun. Oh, Brooklyn, is that yours or Kim's? Who's that? Kimberly, beautiful. Hamantha, oh wow. Wow, that is so pretty. You guys, I'm very, very impressed. Let's see. I had pre-made, but I think it looks more natural when I mix. Absolutely. 
Um, mixing is super fun and we can do it either on our palette or in this painting because it's a little bit more abstract we're, we're doing it on the canvas and I have a lot of fun when I mix straight on the canvas like I have yellow on my brush and instead of washing it off with water I'm just going to find a place here where I think that could go so maybe I'll just do some more bright yellow here and some over here so I don't want to waste any paint, so I'm just going to find a place for it. Looks like yellow could definitely go in this one here. And noticing I didn't totally um, fill out the whole square because I'm going to do some other colors that I also want to mix with in the middle. Because in the middle, what we're going to do is start to incorporate a little green if you want to, if you like your warmer colors, which warmer colors are the reds and the yellows and the oranges, think, things that make you think of the sun. If you want to keep with those, that is fine and fun. But if you want to add some greens, because pineapple in real life, it goes from being very, very green to yellow, um, we can do that too. So I'm just about ready for that step. But I'm going to just clean my brush on the canvas by um, getting rid of some more yellow and, and actually Layering that yellow in places that are already red might be fun. You don't have to do this, but you can. I'm going to go back into some of my red spaces and just add little hints of yellow to give it dimension and character. You see what I did? I just added that yellow um, into the, my red spot. So it kind of creates orange on the canvas. Um, in some areas I have like bright orange or orange that I created on purpose. And then some I'm just kind of like adding the yellow on top of the red so that it looks pretty and fun. There's no right or wrong really with this painting. That's why we chose it. It's just, we're exploring with colors and having a good time. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna, in this case, I might choose to clean my brush because it's got some red on it. And what happens when you do red and green together? Anyone know? You add red and green. So red and green are what are called complementary colors. They're opposites. So what happens when you add opposite colors together on the color wheel uh, or in color theory, you might've learned in art class, um, is you kind of start getting into the browns or grays or blacks and some murkier colors. So before I add green to my reds, because I'm not ready for brown, we might add some brown later, I'm going to clean my brush if I use the same brush, or you could use a different brush um, to add some greens. So we can either make green by adding the blue and the yellow, or use your pre-made green if you want, like a really sharp green. Um, one thing about brush cleaning, if you are using acrylics, is acrylics is actually a form of plastic. So if you don't clean your brush while the paint is wet, um, it can dry up on the brush and ruin your brushes. So we want to definitely take care to um, clean our brushes really well from paint so that they don't dry up. So for this, um, I know blue and yellow make green, and uh, I can show you how to do that, but I'm actually going to use the, the green that comes in the bottle personally and put some on here, and I'm going to add yellow to my green and maybe some white to make it brighter. So just to show you. This is oh, my color. That is beautiful. Is that Nora? Yeah. I love, love, love that. That is going to be so pretty. It is already. Anyone else want to show me theirs before we move on? Ooh, Brooklyn, love it. This is me, that's beautiful. Safa, oh, I love that. I like the extra white gaps in there. I don't know if that's, if I'm saying your parents' name or someone who's Zoom that you're on and you want to introduce yourself, you can. This is so fun. Okay, so I'm just going to bring my uh, camera down to show you my paint palette again. So like I said, I'll just show you to show you blue and yellow. Do you make green? Oh, that's actually really pretty. That's turquoise. It's turquoise because there's more blue than there is yellow. So I'll just add more yellow. And I actually really like that color. 
but I want more like a lime green. So what you need to do for that is actually add more yellow than that. You have to have more yellow than you do blue. And the trick to that is actually what I did was the opposite of what you should do. You should start with the color you need more of, especially the lighter color, and slowly add in um, the color that you're, the darker color, because it's harder to get back from the darker color. So this is fun. It's kind of like a lime green. I'm going to add a little white to brighten it up. Can you guys see what I'm doing down here in my palette? Hope so. Yeah, okay, cool. And I'm just going to keep adding a little more. It got a little too light for me. Cool. And just to show you, clean my brush. That could even look a little different with the pre-made paint where it's green over here. Do some of that. And again, take my yellow, more yellow than green. Start over here. Add a little bit of that. Almost the same color as the one I created from scratch, but a little bit brighter. That's color mixing for you guys. I'm gonna come back up. What color does? Lost it in the chat. Green and blue make green. Yeah, that does make turquoise. The more blue that you add to something, the more mixes to me, it's going to be a teal or a turquoise. Awesome, you guys. Okay, so now I'm just going to take that lime green that I created and some of my yellow spots, like the one where I left. See how I left a chunk here? I'm going to just put some green right in there and mix it all up. Oh, I love that. So my green and yellow, and now I'm going to do just a square that might be mostly green. I'll do one of those here. See, green, and I'll do a nice big one up here. So I'm noticing that this green is very green yellow. And let's say I want a little more green green in there. I'll just take my paintbrush and I'll dip it into the plain green with a little water. And I'll come in and I'll just put it in some areas that I want to reinforce as green. And I'm doing that layering right here on the canvas, see? Oh, that's fun. See that? We've got some green in there. Do another green square up here. Again, you can go with the flow. Like if you want to do any colors that you want to do. Whatever looks good to you. I might even add some green to some of my red squares just to mix it in there. Hmm. I like that. Some green over here. Just adding it. See, it does get a little brown when you add green to red. I just did that over here. But I kind of like that. And now I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to just, and these top ones, you can decide, do I want to go more red? Do I want to go more green and yellow? I'm going to go more yellow and orange again over here, at least for the base. So I'm kind of creating a base color and then I can go on top. And that's going to be the next exciting thing that we do. We just go on top of the colors that we have with some other colors just to kind of get the look that we want. So I went fully yellow over here. And I might add some red in a different square to just bring it all back. Okay. Now the fun part. So we have our like mostly base colors and we're gonna use our paintbrush um, with water and the colors that we 
whenever we desire. And we can go in like I did before on some of these squares and add um, some more color for dimension. So I added some yellow to my brush with water, right? And I'm looking at this square right here. I'm thinking, actually, let's do this one. I left a little gap. There's white space, but also just a gap. I'm gonna just take that and fill that in where there's white space, but I'm also gonna go right over the red and kind of create that orange look on the red while we do some just red. I'm gonna add some yellow here, some orange. And then if you want to add layer, you can get a brush that's dry or hasn't used paint or dry off your brush and dip it straight into that color once things have dried on your canvas and add some details too. See how I just added yellow right here? Because that dried off a bit. So I'm able to add some brighter notes. All right. Do we have any questions? Can we add blue to the top? Yeah, we're, we haven't gotten to those leaves yet, but if you feel ready to get to that, um, I will definitely start teaching that soon. I just kind of want to focus on the bottom here just a bit more. You can play around with it. One exciting thing um, that if you're done getting your, your pineapple squares all nice in the way that you like them, some of you may, may have done that already. This is a choice that you have. If you like the white space and you want to keep it, that's absolutely fine and will look lovely. But I just want to show you the completed painting. I used in this one, the big guy, some brown um, to kind of define some of my squares. I did keep some white space too. And also, once things dried off um, a little bit, I did those little spikies, um, which you can see like here and here and here and here. Um, but you don't have to do that. But that is the next step that we're going to move on to um, if you're ready. So some of you might really like it with just the white space. And I encourage you to keep it that way. Um, but I'm just big to show everyone I'm going to show you. So remember how I said, if you have bottle ground, that's beautiful stuff. Am I going to be able to erase my pencil lines? You can, um, or you can just kind of go over them better with your, your paint and what we're doing now. Um, yeah. You can always reinforce things by going over paint with the pencil line. Some of them may come out, some of them may not, but either way, it's gonna look beautiful no matter what. Um, let's see, okay. so. If anyone remembers what I said about making brown, if you want to make brown, if you don't have it, we can use um, co uh, complementary colors or opposite colors to mix them together. So that could be um, purple and green. Those are opposites. Um, that can be, or red and green, I should say, red and green. If you add a little blue, it can be even more of a deeper brown. Um, that can be, you can add some yellow to it to get it more of like a um, warmer brown. So it's just kind of mixing all your colors together in a little, little bit to create a brown color. So um, I'm gonna make some brown now by using a little blue, a little yellow, so that's green, and then a little red to get a brown color. And if your brown is too like purpley, let's say, because it's blue, you want to add yellow, like more of the color that it's missing. So, um, but also, you know, brown doesn't have to be perfect. It is brown after all. So get something that you like. Another way to make brown is if you have orange and orange that you like, you can add a little dab of black to it and then it'll turn into brown also, or use your bottle of brown. Yeah. So I made this brown just now, I'll show you. Right here. 
I'm mixing pretty much all my colors together. Just mix all my colors together and I need to. Yep, you got pretty made. That's awesome. You can use that too. So brown for me is going to be the color that I use to kind of um if I yeah, that looks cool. Um, define some of these lines. And it doesn't have to, be, you have some options here. You could really just follow your pencil lines completely if you want to, to be really defined. Or what I'm going to start off by doing is just square by square. This is kind of a more abstract way, like with little flicks of my, of a small paintbrush. So it's pretty small and thin. Or if you have a, a larger, more square paintbrush, um, what you'll do is you'll, so this is a larger square paintbrush just use the tip of it, like make your paintbrush go parallel with the canvas like this. So it's the super thinnest part, or you have the option to just use a very, very smaller brush. Those are the options you have. So I'm just gonna do little flicks of my brown to start to define, oh, that wasn't enough paint. Um, some of my squares, not all of them, go over some of my pencil marks, but you have the option to completely, you could do this not at all, or you could do this some. So just, just gonna go down there, do that there. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of picking places. It's kind of random for me, but you could be do it on all your squares of just reinforcing some of these box lines. going over my pencil lines. Do that. And you can do that for every single square or none of your squares. I think this would be a good time just to see where everyone's at. If you have any questions, feel free to show me where you're at, what you're up to. I love that, Shana. Maria, oh, Maria, that's stunning. Look at those colors, and Nora. Vicky, beautiful. So happy you're able to participate. Ooh, Paloma, is that your name or your mom's name? I love that. Brooklyn, very creative. Aporva, I like that too. That's so nice. Carrie with a C. Carrie, I love that. That is beautiful. Sanyukt, very pretty. So, so pretty. Everyone, Ed. Impressive, Ed. Who else wants to show me? I'm just going to the next page in case I missed anyone. Anyone who didn't want to share their camera yet want to come in and Kumi, beautiful. I like your interpretation. Ooh, Tombi or whoever's in that camera. There's a couple of you. I like those colors. Is there a Caruther family? Oh, that is pretty. And Safa and Nabil, I love that too. Needy, yes. Did anyone have any questions that you want to be unmuted for that I can um, ask or and help answer? Are you guys having a good time? You want to let me know in the chat box if you're having fun. See some thumbs and head nods, good. Can I add a bit of gray? Absolutely. This is your painting. You can do whatever you want. But just be careful. What I would say about gray and black and the browns is that sometimes it's hard to recover from those. Um, we want to use them sparingly uh, because we can start to not ruin, but um, some of our colors can start to become gray too. So we just want to use those sparingly. Nice, mom. My mom's here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Some of you, this is your first time with acrylics. That's so fun. Acrylics are super fun because they're easy to mix and they're very forgiving. So if you make a mistake, all you have to do is wait for it to dry a little bit and then paint right over it. So if anyone has a, a part of their painting they don't love so much, just be patient. Maybe put it out in the sun and we'll come back to it and add some, um, you know, lighter colors or define more things. You're done, Shana. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to just um, 
finish up a few more on mine just so that people can see. And then we can move on to the leaf part. Well, I'm just choosing, I don't know, there's no rhyme or reason to define a few of these. Okay. We'll leave that for now. Again, you know, you, you can always like step back from your painting, have one of your friends show it. Um, your siblings, your friends, your parents show it to you, step back and say, oh, I like that. Or you want to add something, you want to change something. So spend some time holding your painting away from you. Okay, now who wants to do leaves? Is now a good time for leaves? Are we ready for the next half? Okay, Brooklyn, we're ready. Shana's ready. Safa, Nabil, Nora, okay. We've got some people ready, enough people that we can start to explore that. Um, and Kathy's ready. Okay. So again, this would be a good step to um, kind of clean your brushes for this. If you, we are going to be using some of the same colors that we already created, but we're also going to be using some new colors. So, um, China. I'm sorry, I'm getting that wrong. You can tell, oh, I got it right, shine, okay. There we go. Yeah, you can always unmute yourself and let us know if you wanna have a little conversation. Okay, so like I said, we're, now's a good time to get our brushes clean because we don't want them to um, get ruined and um, dry them off with your paper towel or your napkin. Okay, so we have some options here. Um, if you liked, painting with some guidelines like um, your pencil marks. You're welcome to um, be careful because your painting down here is trying to do some more guidelines. Um, pencil marks, I am gonna choose not to, me personally, but you have that freedom if you are more comfortable following your own guidelines. If you wanna have some fun and just trust the process a little bit, then you can do that as well. So, um, got my clean brush and um, this one, like I said, it is trusting the process because we're doing some layers basically. So it might not look perfectly the way you want it when you first lay your paint marks down, but don't worry, it's fixable. Um, or we can, you know, add some things to it to make it look the way we want it to. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, usually, like I say, we like to start with lighter colors and then go darker because it's easier to add darker colors to lighter colors. But in this case, we're going to use the method of letting things dry a little bit and then adding lighter colors on top. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, and if you have glue, um, I'm going to just dip it right in the blue. Um, and I am going to look up here. I'm going to start actually with this leaf that kind of goes up there. And I'm going to just kind of do um, Let's call it a frown line, like a, just like that, like a, a frown. Um, and then what we're going to do is reinforce our frown line so that um, comes to a tip. And then at that tip, we just go follow it and then create like a, it's almost like a beak or two lines that kind of converge together. And that's our leaf. So that looks good, Maria. Yeah, but there's, again, no right or wrong. It looks great. So what we can do is um, fill that in a little bit and just bring it down. So we have, that's our first leaf, okay. And then, um, just because I want to like use the paint that's on my paintbrush, I'm going to use the same color and I'm going to um, do another leaf um, kind of below that, obviously. Um, and this one is going to be here. I'll draw, I'll paint it first. Um, 
a more straighter line, but also kind of have a frown and then go down. You can curve your leaves. So this one's just kind of in the middle. It's more flat, but it still does curve. And then I'm going to do that same thing where I come to the point and I paint right back and then I make it thicker here. I'm just going to fill in any white spots. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to find a spot where I want my blue, blue leaf. So I'm going to come. We're going to act like there's an imaginary middle here. We've created this middle of the pineapple. You can even draw it if it makes you feel more comfortable where there's this middle line. Because eventually we're going to draw a leaf on top there. Maybe I should have started with that. And we're going to come from that middle line and go and do the same thing on the other side, basically. Pretend like there's a middle and then do it, the leaf there. That comes out. It goes back into our middle. See? And we can fill that in. These are my leaves. Beautiful. I like that approach. You kind of um, did a, an outline of all the leaves. I love it. And they're all different colors. Oh, I love that. And you can either fill them in or keep them not filled in because it looks beautiful the way it is right now. Anyone else want to show me the leaves they have so far or if they went ahead? They want Because, oh, beautiful. Everyone is so, so pretty. So we're going to keep doing, yes, Maria, beautiful. I love that, you guys. Okay, we're going to keep doing this. Um, but you might want to, um, we're going to kind of either mix more colors or do, Maria, are you trying to say something? You're muted. Should we unmute you? Here, give me just a second. Let's, if one of the moderators wants to find Maria, she has something to say, but she's muted. Here, I found her. Here we go. I'm asking you to unmute, Maria. Do you see that? You have to click on your screen. We asked you to unmute, but you have to accept it on your side. No? So to unmute, it's in the bottom um, left corner of your screen. You see the mute microphone, and then you can um, just click it so that you're unmuted. Okay. There you go. Yes. Well, thank you. I just wanted to say that you're a wonderful teacher. You're oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I you. love your approach and you are so sweet and, and of course, so talented. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I'll give you, you guys, I'll put my email in the chat later if you, if you want to hire me for a birthday party or an event or a girls night or anything like that, a date night. Um, any fun things like that. So uh, we're going to continue um, with doing this. Like I said, I'm going to now just, you know, switch to green and I'll do some leaves in green. So I'll do, um, again, and these leaves can look however you want. You can follow what I'm doing. I'm going to, this one is going to go up for me. See, I kind of had that go up from that middle point that I kind of created. Even if there's overlap, that's okay. So that's a green leaf. And I'll do another green leaf. And you know what's cool is if you didn't clean your brush and you still have blue on it, it's gonna be blue and green, which is that turquoise we were talking about earlier. And I'll do another one. Let's see, maybe here. And I made that one like flatter. This is kind of hard. Well, you're doing such a great job. Even if it's hard, you can do hard things. Isn't that cool? I'm proving it to yourself and everybody here. And then, so see how I kind of, um, there's a white space. So what I'm going to do is this leaf is going to come up and be in our foreground and cover that white space. So see that? Kind of from our middle point. And maybe I'll do another. I'm done with my here. This is what they look like. Oh, I love that you colored them in with all those different colors. It matches your pineapple so well, and it looks beautiful. How do you feel? Definitely, if you feel like you're done, sign that, because your parents are going to probably want to hang that up. 
Anyone else want to show me theirs? We're still doing leaves though. So um, I'm just switching. So I went from blue to green. I didn't clean my brush because I liked having those different colors in there. That's just part of the look that I'm going for. So now what I'm going to do is actually, if you still have some of that lime green left from before, you can just dip your dirty brush right into there and create some leaves in that color. Uh, if you need to clean your brush, you can, or want to use a different brush, that's fine. But I'm just gonna dip in here. Kind of have some, I wanted to add more yellow. So I did. And like, do you see, it kind of has like almost like a tie dye effect because my had my brush was dirty. So even though I added yellow, it does have that green still in it. I love that personally. Some of you might like more specific colors and that is okay. I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna do just yellow with a dirty brush. Let it flow. Nothing's perfect because they're leaves and you know, they all have their fun flavor. Might do another yellow one here. Which ended up being more green and that's okay too. And then I kind of, in my other painting, I did these like turquoise or like teal light leaves. Yeah, Tongbi, please show me yours. Do you want to unmute yourself so I can, you can show it to us? Yes. Um, <laughs> That is stunning. I love it. Do you love it? Yeah. Yeah? Are you going to keep adding to it or you think you're done? I'm going to add stuff Wonderful. to it. Wonderful. Yeah, keep adding. If anyone else wants to unmute, now is a great time to say your name and um, your painting, how, if you had a good time. Um, definitely say your name so in case I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time, you can tell us. Thanks, Brooklyn, in the chat. I'm done. What's your name? I love it. Daniel. I love your painting. Do you love it? Yeah, I like it. What do you like about it most? What's your favorite part of your own painting? Oh, uh, the mixing. The mixing, that was fun. I love your leaves. I love them. What my son Who's made. with you? <laughs> this is what my son made, actually. Oh, I love it. Look at the creativity there. Somebody's asking if they can add purple. Of course you can add purple. This was so fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Nora, I see you holding up your painting. I'd love for you to introduce it and yourself. Do you know how to unmute yourself? And while you do that, I'm just gonna add a few more leaves. I'm making that turquoise color, which is the, um, the blue and some white and some of the green or yellow up to you. Be like a lighter blue with a little bit of green in it. I'm gonna make some of those leaves too. But if anyone, while I'm doing that, wants to introduce their painting or you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Virginia. Thank you for coming. I'm gonna add that here. Look, this is my turquoise color. Oh, that's fun. I have a question. Yeah. Are, are you going to do more of these like for different painting types or just this is the only one? This class, you mean? Yeah. Well, thank you for asking. That is actually brings up the perfect opportunity for me to say. So I am a member of the Newcastle Arts Council. So there's a few of us on here, um, adults who are on the Art Council. And we do a lot of really fun things in our free time to bring art to Newcastle. So we are looking for every opportunity we can to part with uh, to partner with Vicki at the library to host more events. And our goal for this year is to have something like this once a month. That's the goal. So we hope you come and we hope you register. Um, I may not be doing any more, but I can if you want me to. We can definitely talk about that if you had fun with me today or we can do private lessons or something like that, if that's something you wanna do. So I'll put, like I said, I'll put my email in the chat. Um, some other fun things that I want to talk about for the Newcastle Arts Council is we've got a lot of fun things um, planned and on the calendar. So um, make sure your parents, or if you have your own email, if you want to sign up for our newsletter, 
you're on the newsletter so that you can be aware of the fun things that are coming. Um, if you did, you may not have heard at the beginning of the call. For March, not painting, but there's actually, um, if you've ever heard of embroidering before, it's where you kind of like do sewing on a small patch. Um, Friendship someone, bracelets? What? Friendship bracelets? Friendship bracelets, that's a fun one. We can maybe look at someone who knows how to do that, some jewelry stuff. We love the ideas. And there's a really fun thing I wanna let you guys know about. It's not public yet, but we have a mural coming to Newcastle at Lake Bourne, which is gonna be super fun and super exciting. Um, a professional artist made it for us. Um, so that's going to be fun when we unveil that. But yeah, this was so fun. Sarah, yeah. Sarah, do you, Sarah, do you use your, Sarah, do you use your um, Gmail address that I have? Yeah, but I'm Sarah Barron at gmail.com. You can put that in the chat. Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in the chat and then you folks can, if you want to contact um, Sarah for future events uh, of your own private party. She does these type of programs for like birthday parties or any type of event. I'll, I'll pop her contact info in the chat here. Thank you, Vicki. Um, Paloma, or if that's your parents' name, do you want to unmute yourself? I see your beautiful, beautiful painting. I'd love for you to share with us. Uh, that's my name and this is my pineapple. Tell them about the painting. Did you have a favorite? It's so beautiful. I'm very impressed. Do you have, did you have a favorite part of making this painting? Uh, the shading. The shading, yeah, that's so fun. You did a great yeah. job with that. So you should be really proud. <laughs> Nora, do you want to unmute yourself? I see you holding it up. Or if you want to say something in the chat, that's okay too. You don't have to talk if you don't want to. Um. Thank you so much. Yeah, this was like really fun. So yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Hey Sarah, this is yes, Mama. Mom. Well, I'm looking for your approval. Okay, it looks very nice, Mom. We can we can definitely talk about it later, but it looks and wonderful. to tell you how amazing I think you are. Thank you, it's Mom. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Is that Kim? Is that you? Brooklyn. Kimberly. That is fun, fun, fun. I love it. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. wow. Brooklyn. That's a different painting than I saw five minutes ago. Wow. I, I put in the little sketches for him. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? This is so fun. Um, this is Steve's. Steve. Very nice. Steve. <laughs> Steve's looks good. This is mine. Oh, I love that. Yeah. See, see, see how different everybody is. It's so cool. Everybody chose their own interpretation. I didn't even get to draw. Um, so I'm going to take a, a pause from these really quick. I'm, I'm going to, my other painting, there's some red you can add. Where's this one? Brown. Uh, let me, I'll show you those brown leaves actually first. And then what I'll do is the spikes, just in case anyone wants, needs to run and just want to see the thing. Um, Tommy, did you have a question? No, it's not an egg. It's a pineapple. If you're um, if you don't have a specific question, let's make sure right now. We're just, it's, 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 I'm gonna say, say that I added white on this. Oh, that looks so good! Very, very good. That's amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you a few more things, and then again, you can choose to add these things or leave them because it seems like everyone is, you know, having fun doing their own thing, and I love that the most. So I'm gonna take my brown color. I just want to show you. Um, the part that I'm going to do now is um, this part where the leaves kind of come down onto the pineapple. So I'm going to just show you a few of those. And then um, also show you where, if you want to add your pineapple spikes, um, that could be done too. So we'll show you those. And then, um, yeah, one thing is we will eventually at the, at the end, which is, we'll see 1230, but we want to get a picture of everyone holding up their painting. Um, so if you came, hopefully you can un, un make yourself show you, show up on camera and hold up your painting. We can do that um, in like five minutes. And also, if you want to take a nice picture of your painting and post it to Facebook and tag um, the library, so KCLS Newcastle Library and the Newcastle Arts Council, um, we would love that because we want to see your art. And we also want other people to see your art and to see how fun you had so we can have more people come up. Okay. So I'm just gonna um, take the brown that I made. 
because I don't remember I'm doing these sleeves now. Again, some of you may choose to like have these on your painting. You don't have to, but I'm just going to show you in case you do want to. So I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to create um some like triangles almost really here that connects back to that main center line that I kind of created as a guide for myself. And I'm going to do one here, the end of the pineapple. And again, there's no such thing as perfect here. We're just going to have fun with it. And then I would do another one here, down here. So just kind of like outlining my pineapple at the bottom. And then if you want like to create a dimensional ones that kind of stick up, you're going to just kind of um, do like wrist flicks basically. Um, to do that, okay? And someone said they, their favorite part was shading. And I love, love, love shading. And you can shade or highlight. Shading is when you add like darker colors to make things uh, more dimensional. And highlighting is when you add lighter colors. Um, well, thank you so much, Paloma and your family, whoever was joining you, that is so nice. Um, so I'm gonna take that brown and I'm gonna also add some other, just to like kind of get the paint off my brush. Um, add some up here, like other brown leaves, just to kind of like bring in the colors so that it's consistent throughout. It's all part of the same pineapple. But um, if you wanna do like highlights or shading, it's just kind of getting that color darker. I think you added too many strokes at the top. I don't think so. Let me see your painting. If you wanna show it to me, um, I can, no, that's beautiful. What we can do if you think you added too many, is define some of them more with the shading or the highlighting. So if it's too dark and you wanna go with the lighter, you can either add white or a light. And I'm gonna show that to you now, actually, okay? So um, if you want more definition because things that are looking a little foggy or gray, um, first of all, you can let things dry a little bit. Second of all, you can just add. So um, let me just show you. I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna add it to the turquoise color that I made. And I'm going to add white in there. Like it's on this leaf, I don't know if you can see, where I added some white to kind of add a highlight. And I'll do that again here to this blue one, where I'm just adding dimension by adding white. Cause like, it's not just straight white. I'm mixing it kind of with my, the colors that I have. And I'll do that over here as well to create that dimension if something's too, so that was white, me adding white there to create the dimension. But I also might go the opposite direction where I do more solid of that color or a darker version and just reinforce it with a darker color. You see the shading and highlighting going on at that very top leaf there? And that can be done for all of these. For all. So we'll add a little darker here. You're muted, mom. I can only hear you from the other room. So if you want to unmute, we can talk. Okay. So um, and then this one, I haven't done it yet. I I I really like adding the red and pink leaves. I think it's like super fun because it kind of brings back the colors and incorporates what we already have down here, back up to here. Um now. This is all kind of abstract. These colors don't really oh, exist with pineapple, nice. but it's super fun for what we're doing. I like so them. I'm just going to do that. That's my pink leaf. And one up here. Ooh, so fun. Sorry, sir. I was just asking about signing your work. Can people sign that? No, you should definitely sign your work. Um, you can practice your signature off of the canvas if you aren't confident, or it could be abstract. You can sign it with the Sharpie. It's really up to you. So that was the leaves. You know, we have our pink, I've added my pink leaves there. And again, some the ones that are darker, I'll take a smaller brush. And I'm going to um, see the, let's look at that one red leaf, right? So I'm going to take my, a smaller brush and then in white, just kind of highlight, highlight a part of it. And I might highlight um, this here. And in the pink one, the one that's lighter right here, 
I might add just a little bit of red to, to like shadow that or so not just super dimensional. And I can do that with a brown too, like add a darker brown. I'll show you in just a second. So I'll just take the brown leaves that I have and I'm just gonna kind of super fun. Okay, and then if anyone wants to do those spikes, because we I haven't showed you those, it's again, it's just um, what about the spikes? Great. Okay, I'm glad that you asked. Um spikes for me again, so. What we're going to do for spikes is in some of our darker spikes, we'll show you those first. We're going to do lighter spikes and in some of our lighter squares we're going to do darker spikes so that's how I want to do it if you want to do the same color spikes. that's fine, but here I have um a like a red square and i'm choosing yellow for my spike. So i'm just this is just for me because we're doing abstract again, you can choose to do little triangles, you can choose to do this however you want but for me i'm just going to do like a. Let me get the right brush. Like a, again, like a little wrist flick. You see that where it was just kind of like a, well, it's not bright enough, hold on. See that, just like a little wrist flick. And then I'm gonna do that same thing in a different square and a different square. So it's kind of like a contrasting color, but as we get up further here, I'll choose a darker color. So in, the greener squares, I'm going to choose like more red or red brown, you know, whatever. And do see it added spikes there. All right, there are my spikes. And you know what? I'm feeling pretty good about my painting. I am going to leave it for now, but maybe I'll, when I look at it, um, I might find some other places that I might want to do some highlights or some shadowing, and that's totally cool. Does anyone want to show me? That is so beautiful, Nora. Did you frame it? That's awesome. Um, no, can she just sign it? The our paint painting thing that we oh did. like an easel that is so cool Maria stunning 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 anyone else want to we definitely want to get our pictures ooh that is a graphic version that is awesome look at that tell us more Vicky unmute yourself so we can we can hear more that was Jay Jay's been working away I've been doing my acrylics and my husband Jay. <laughs> Um, he's been apparently, I didn't even know he was working on his iPad doing a digital version of what you were doing. <laughs> that is so fun. Thanks for participating, Jay. Um, Jay's an awesome artist, uh, apparently, and he does it graphic art, which is another really fun thing. So how cool, everyone. Lillian, are you having a good time? Yeah? Let's see. Can I see your painting? Caruthers, is that your last name? Oh, oh God. God. Thumbs up from Lillian. What's your name? Introduce yourself. I love that. It's definitely abstract and uh, I love those deep colors. Well, you were unmuted for a second. Not just for kids, of course, not just for kids. Who else wants to show me their painting? I had the best time today. Carrie Haas, did you paint today? Let's see it. Let's see. Wow, someone is an artist. I should have known. Beautiful. Sarah, do you think now, are you um, essentially done with instruction and now might- Yeah, for instruction, I feel really pretty good. good. Um, but if anyone has any questions about their specific painting and they want some help or they just want to show, I would love to see your paintings. Okay, um, I'm going to stop recording now and um, unspotlight Sarah.